Rajeshwari MJ. She pursued her BE in Electrical and Electronics at the People's Education Society College of Engineering, Mandya. She pursued her M.Tech in VLSI Design and Embedded Systems at the Sri Jagadguru Balagangadharanta Institute of Technology, Bangalore. Her personal skills lie in good verbal and written communication skills. Her areas of interest lie in OOPS with C++, Renewable Energy Sources, HVDC Transmission, Digital Relays, Automotive Electronics, Advances in VLSI Design. She has also had papers presented at the national level such as the innovative architecture for SOC multi-corp hybrid processor presented at the RNSIT Bangalore. Welcome to UGC lecture series of BSc Applied Electronics. Today we are dealing with the subject television and engineering. Uh, Let us start uh, some of the topics in unit 2. The contents that we are going to discuss today are Vidicon, Plumbicon, uh, these two contents types of camera tubes, uh, the another type is image orthicon that we already discussed in the last session. Next topic is basics of television broadcasting, standards of television system, in standards of television system we concentrate on CCIRB standards and the last one is positive and negative modulation. Let us start with the type of camera tube that is a Vidicon camera tube. The Vidicon camera tube is very popular because of its light weight and small in size and easy of operation compared to image orthicon and it has a function is basically on the photoconductivity. The photoconductivity is a property when the conduction takes place due to the incident light. The electron will going to emit due to the incident light. This is a concept that they are adopted in a uh, Vidicon operation. Due to the photoconductivity, the resistance of the target material shows a marked decrease when exposed to light. So, due to the photoconductivity, the resistance will be varied. So, this will going to helpful in a, a manner that we going to get a different uh, current or uh, voltage signal to the variation of a resistance by the when the Vidicon uh, camera will be camera lens is exposed to a light. The target consists of a thin photoconductive layer of either selenium or antimony components. Here we can observe from the Vidicon camera tube picture, the target will be this, this area will be the target, this is the glass face plate, on this only the light will going to fall. This is the way the electron, the image will going to be deposit on the target. Here in mid between these two glass face plate and the target we are going to connect the load resistance. The target is deposited on a transparent conducting film coated on the inner surface of a face plate. So here we are having a conducting film, this is having a photoconductive material and another one will be having a conductive material. So whatever the electrons got from the photoconductivity will falls on the conductive coating on the target. This conductive coating is also known as a signal electrode or plate. Image side of the photo layer which is in contact with the signal electrode is connected to that is what in between this, this photo layer and conductive layer will be there. In between this two we are going to connect the supply across a supply through load resistance. So, the beam that emerges from the electron gun is focused on the surface of the photoconductive layer by combined action of the uniform magnetic field and also the electrostatic field by external coils will be there. These are the external coils we can observe from the figure from the horizontal and vertical deflection coils will going to helpful for focusing the electron beam that is ejected from the cathode of the electron gun that will going to fall on the photo layer. So, grid number 4, the grid number 4 will going to represent the decelerator. The decelerator what is the uh, task that we are going to done by the decelerator is it going to reduce the speed of the electron that is falling on the target plate. So, if it is having the more speed then it may be possible that electron may deflect somewhere else. 
So, this decelerator or grid number 4 will going to help in reducing the electron speed. So, the low velocity will be obtained so that we can prevent the secondary emission also. Deflection of the beam for scanning the target is obtained by this vertical and horizontal deflection and the focusing coil will going to help in the focusing of a beam on a particular point on the target plate. So, next we are going to come across a, a circuit of output signal from the Wydecon camera. This figure shows how the electron gun will going to emit the scanning beam. This will fall on the photo layer. This is the target also called a signal plate or plate simply called as plate. So, this is the photo layer where uh, the, the electrons will going to fall on the signal plate and uh, this will create a difference in the potential. There will be difference in the voltage we got due to the voltage variation we got a current that will going to conduct through the load resistance and this output is called as a video signal output. So, that what we get from the scanning beam, the scanning beam as a, as the beam scans the target plate different positive potential on the side of the photo layer will be get. So, there will be different potential on this target plate. So, we also we have sufficient number of electrons from the beam that is deposited on the photo layer surface. So, to reduce the potential of each element towards the zero cathode potential. So, already some of the electrons will be exist. So, this emitted electrons will also helpful in making this potential to a zero cathode potential. So, the remaining electrons not deposited. So, some of the electrons will not be deposited. Some of the electrons will left over. So, that left over electrons will be returned back, returned back to the electron gun. So, this change in potential on each element while the beam scans causes current flow in the signal electrode and this will producing a varying voltage across the load resistance. So, amplitude of current and output voltage across RL that is directly proportional to the intensity of light that is due to the intensity of light the voltage that we obtain across the RL will be changed the amplitude of the voltage that we obtain from across the resistance will be directly proportional to the intensity of light. So, next we move on to another important type of camera tube is plumbicon. This is the latest camera tube that you are used. It is a fast response and produces high quality pictures at low light levels. Even it is having a low light also it is the picture quality will be more compared to other two camera tubes. Its smaller size and lightweight together with low power operating characteristics makes it an ideal tube for transistorized television cameras. So, it will be very useful for or the television for television cameras or filmy cameras or uh, advertising cameras. The except for the target that is the target material in plumbicon is uh, different compared to Vidicon. What is the material that we are going to use we will discuss. Focus and deflection are both obtained magnetically. So, here focusing and deflection is both obtained by a magnetic field. Its target is operated effectively by a PIN type semiconductor diode that is P type and N type is insulator is sandwiched between P and N type. So, this is the target material that we are going to use in a plumbicon. This differentiate uh, among the Vidicon and plumbicon that is the target material that we are using on Vidicon and plumbicon is different that is PIN semiconductor here are used for plumbicon as a target material. So, the plumbicon camera tube having the target details here, it is having an intrinsic layer and that is pure lead oxide and the glass face plate and the N type layer and also it contains a N type layer tin oxide will be there and the P type layer doped P type layer will be there. So, these forms a PIN type diode, here the scanning beam will fall on the P type layer. So, which will going to eject the electron from the P type which will going to move across the intrinsic layer and produces a current flow in the diode. The inner surface of the face plate is coated with a thin transparent conductive layer of tin oxide. This is what the inner surface is forms N type it is having of a tin oxide layer. 
this forms a strong end type and serves as a signal plate of the target. So, this will be a target plate or end type material. The end type material will going to act as a target material. On the scanning side, this will be the scanning part. Scanning side of this layer is deposited a photoconductive layer of pure lead monoxide. This will be consisting of pure lead oxide which is a scanning portion which is in photoconductive layer of pure lead monoxide which is intrinsic or I type material which is of intrinsic or I type material this is called as I type that is intrinsic layer or lead monoxide is used for this layer. Finally, the PBO is doped to form a P type semiconductor on which the scanning beam lands. The scanning beam is landing on the P type layer that is PBO is doped on the intrinsic layer that is pure PBO where the P, P on the P type layer only the scanning beam will going to fall. This is how the signal shows the signal plate that is a target plate that is consists of tin oxide N type material and this is a P type material this is the intrinsic material where the scanning beam falls on the uh, P type material uh, due to the ejection of electron from P type to N type there is a flow of electron and uh, the current will occurs this flow of current will be flowing across the RL resistance and this output the output from here is called as a camera signal output or video signal output that is a desired what we want for the further transmission. Next we move on to another important topic that is basics of television broadcasting. This television broadcasting is very interesting and it has many features too. There are some points that we need to know about the television broadcasting. The composite video signal generated by the camera associated circuitry is processed in the control room before routing it to the transmitter. So, whatever the we discussed about composite video signal generate this composite video signal will having the complete picture details this has to be processed before it is broadcasting or transmitted what are the things will be carried out before broadcasting what are the necessities how a studio should be how editing should be what are the rooms required how the acoustics will be in a studio everything we will discuss in detail a transmitter picture carrier frequency assigned to the station. So, till the camera that is the main room when the signal is recorded that the captured signal is recorded in a camera that is sent to uh, camera control monitor room. So, the in the camera monitor room the mixing and editing and the audio quality everything is checked and it has to be sent to the signal amplifier where the signal is amplified and modulated and it is sent up with a particular carrier signal with a particular carrier signal it is transmitted. So, this is what a television broadcasting system has. So, finally what at the end will be the antenna will going to transmit the both video and sound signal with the same with the same output that is antenna and in the receiver part they are going to integrate it and it is separated by a separator as a video signal and audio signal and the same demodulating amplification the same thing will be carried out in the receiver part. The television studio will be looks like this it will be having a VIP studio equipment racks rewinding rooms production control and the main studio and M will indicate here the monitor C will be the camera and here also same thing the where in the control room and the rewinding room the main editing of a captured or stored picture will be takes place before transmitting that is what we left out till now whatever the video signal that from the camera is sent to a particular camera monitor room. So, here the production or technicians will be there for editing and mixing all the pictures in a sequence and this will be from camera to here there is one more point we need to remember from camera that what we recorded till the camera monitor room there will be no modulation the direct signal the whatever the camera is captured will be sent directly to the camera monitor room. there will be no modulation the modulation is only when it is out of the control camera control room to the transmitter that is 
to the amplification part then it is started as a modulated wave and it is sent to the antenna for transmitter this is how a television studio would be and this television studio has to be a uh, many studio will be constructed and all the studios will be connected to the single control monitor room that is also possible and in the single control monitor all the shooted pictures can be edited and transmitted with the different frequency or with a different channel and it can be broadcasted so this is how a television studio should be and television studio will be having a fine acoustic to capture all this work clear quality sound and it will be well lighted and some of the dimmer stats will be used to control the lighting effects all these factors will be important to get a well a uh, proper picture so next we move on to important thing uh, that we know about uh, television broadcasting uh, so we have some of the things we need to uh, know our television cameras how this television cameras works television cameras are of divided into two one is two basics one is self contained cameras and another one two unit camera two unit systems so in the self contained camera what how it is this it is it is a latest one and it is having all the circuitry equipments uh, that is it can be recorded and it is also having all the circuitry element like video pre amplifier and video monitor pickup tubes everything will be included in the self camera itself but whereas in this uh, two unit system there will be two unit one unit will be the camera part the lens part where we get only the desired video signal that will be sent to the control monitor room there uh, it will go that the controlling of all the captured image will be from a remote camera head that is photo sensitivity pickup tube associated deflection circuitry video pre amplifier everything will be in a separate thing so all these will be having in a separate unit and only the focusing part will be in a another unit thus the bulk of the circuitry is in the camera control unit which is connected to the camera head by means of a multi so all the bulk circuitry the necessary bulk circuitry will be in the camera control room it is not with the unit 1 unit 2 will be having all the circuitry element but unit 1 will be having on the only the picture details it is having all the remote camera head will going to control all this the photo sensitivity a pickup tube and a deflection circuitry video pre amplifier everything will be controlled by a remote camera head and this is uh, how the program control room will be it will be having different monitors in all the monitor the producer or a director will going to watch all the monitors and the uh, cameras will be placed in a different angle to shoot at a different angle so uh, the producer will decide which has seen has to be merged with with and the audio quality and the audio mixers will be there will to check the audio quality there will be special equipment so uh, whenever it is possible to mix match both video and audio the scene will be mixed and it is rolled back to the transmitter these are the controlling units for the audio and video controlling panel and these are the different monitors where uh, we can watch cameras kept at the studio in a different angle next will be the synchronizing system those synchronizing systems helps us to capture the picture uh, from a different camera so let us have a look for example the synchronizing generator will going to uh, generate a synchronizing pulse from a synchronizing generator to all the cameras to capture at a time if camera 1 has to capture its particular angle camera 2 also started to capture the same scene but in a different angle so the three cameras are kept in a different angle but through the help of sync generator we can capture that same scene with a three different position this is one example another one is connection to several monitors for displaying the output of a single camera the single camera will be used here this camera will going to uh, send the picture from to the different monitor this can be watched by a control room so that we can 
uh, edit and mix whichever we want we can skip it off or whichever we want we can retain this will be helpful in one single camera and three, two, one to five monitors and another example is switcher for selecting any camera output to one monitor so one monitor will be there so one monitor want to see the camera shooting scenes so of different cameras if the monitor one has only one monitor will be there this monitor has to watch all these three mains there will be separate switcher should be there at each camera this has to be connected in parallel so separate switches will be there whenever the monitor has a control to camera one so the camera one pitch scene uh, has to be seen in the monitor through the switch selector and the camera two scene will be seen through the help of switch uh, selector by in the cam monitor so this is the three different ways of arranging monitor and camera so that with the synchronization system can be achieved so the scene synchronization everything can be done with the this three type of arrangement so next will be the master control room this is an important uh, thing where all the quality of audio and video and the desired scene or film has to be broadcasted everything is decided in this room this is a fully of circuitry board and monitors in small broadcasting houses the pcr has a master switcher for routing the composite video signal and allied audio output directly to the transmitter so small in a very small uh, broadcasting the pcr will going to have a master switch this will going to send the both composite and audio signal directly to the transmitter but this room houses centralized video equipment like sync pulse generator special effect generator test equipment video and audio monitor besides a master routing switcher all these will be included in a small broadcasting houses next will be the television transmitter how the televised picture is transmitted through a transmitter let's have a uh, in detail look this will gives a tv camera where the picture is focused the tv camera will going to send the video signal that is what we studied this tv camera tubes and how we got the video signal till now uh, with the help of three different types of uh, tubes that is orthicon plumbicon vidicon the, the signal that we can expect from here is video signal output so video signal output our composite video signal is sent to the camera amplifier so this is a camera amplifier block from camera amplifier block we are going to send this to the equalization and signal level settings so we need to set everything for a equal so if uh, there are mismatch will be there in some of the signal in that case equalization circuit will going to check for its equalization of signal levels and the signal level will be controlled with the help of some signal control knobs and again the composite video signal is sent to video amplifier so this video amplifier will having a monitor here composite video from the video amplifier we can watch this what the signal is how the quality through the monitor from here again this is to send to the distributor and switcher from other studio they are going to send their uh, pre recorded uh, pictures or scene that also can be recorded or monitored here in the distributor and switcher including this signal and also if needed this also will be transmitted through the coaxial cable to a transmitter from the transmitter again video will be amplified dc amplification will be there again this will be checked with the help of monitor and it is modulated here comes the modulation of radio frequency this will be important for a transmitter so from here onwards only the transmitting part will be exist so what we can observe here from other studios means whatever the camera is captured till now the only from directly from the captured camera to the control room that is what the signal that we can observe here so after that the coaxial cable will transmit this to amplifier this is where actual processing of a transmission starts after that the dc amplification this will be again checked with the monitor this is modulated and power amplified and sent to the vsb filter the vestigial sideband filter and combining network where we have to combine the video signal with the 
audio signal. The audio input will be sent to audio processing unit where we are going to process the audio for to get the desired audio output. The desired audio output has to amplify and it is sent to loudspeaker to check the quality. Again it is sent to distributor and switcher. Here comes again the control room, control monitor room where the audio everything has to be checked. So, again this will be also linked with the audio inputs from other studio. This will be sent to the cable that has to be transmitted to for cable to transmit to the audio amplifier. So, after audio amplification again to the loudspeaker we can check the quality of sound. This is pre-emphasized circuit and again FM modulator frequency multiplier is used then it is sent for a power amplifier sent to the vestigial sideband filter and combining network where video and audio will be combined and it is transmitted to the same antenna through an electromagnetic wave. This is how the television transmitting uh, transmitter works. So, next we move on to television systems and television systems we are till now we are know about monochrome system and the color TV system and these two system will be having some standards. What are these systems having? Three monochrome system are developed. The three monochrome systems are 525 line that is used by American that is 525 lines per frame. Each frame consists of 525 lines scanning lines. So, that this standard is considered by American. 625 lines of um, scanning lines per frame. This is considered by European and also from uh, by Indian also. This is another one that is 819 line by French and the UK is using 415 line but now it is changed to 625 line and the most important in Indians are using 625 B monochrome system. We are talking about monochrome that is a uh, black and white system, black and white TV system. Next we move on to color TV standards. There must be standards for uh, color TV as well as monochrome. So, color TV when the color TV comes there must be standards for color TV. Some of the standards that are used worldwide are NTSC. NTSC stands for National Television System Committee which was founded by USA at, at 1953 and it is also adopted by Japan and Canada. The another one is PAL phase alteration by line. This is adopted by Germany. This will reduce color display errors and it is also adopted by UK, Australia, Spain and India. Next is SECAM that is sequential memory. This is adopted by France and it is uh, adopted by France at 1965. This SECAM is also adopted by Hungary. The deciding factor for adoption is all dependent on compatibility with already existing monochrome system. So why it is having different color standards means because they are already adopted some different monochrome system like this. Different monochromes for American US 625, 525, 819. For this technique they adopted this different uh, color TV standards. Next we move on to the uh, important thing that is CCIR. Committee Consultative for International Radio. This is going to give a worldwide standard one, only one rule for all television transmission. So, there should be a standard for television transmission that has to be done by this CCIRB. Some of the points that uh, specification of CCIRB standards are, it is having number of scanning lines per uh, frame that is 625. This is what the some of the standards that we are going to discuss in a CCIRB. This is discussed already 625 lines per frame like that interlace ratio is should be 2 is to 1, aspect ratio 4 is to 3, the uh, horizontal blanking pulse of H sync uh, pulse should be 4.7 microsecond, back post would be 5.8 microsecond. These are the set standard of CCIRB and this is adopted in mostly India. Uh, these are some of the specification of CCIRB standards. Let us move on to the summary that what we are discussed is on Vidicon functions and it is uh, basically on the photoconductivity and also uh, the plumbicon. The plumbicon is basically having a target material of PIN type of diode and uh, the next one is television cameras that is divided into two that is self contained cameras and two unit system 
and finally we cross some of the things uh, that happens in a television broadcasting system some of the question that uh, we uh, need to know about this session are how video signal is developed in a videcon camera tube how is a videcon different from an image orthicon what are the differences of videcon and plumbicon what is the difference between a self contained and a two unit camera system explain how in a multi camera si system synchronization is maintained between the cameras and control monitor references are engineeringtv.com and tvtechnology.com for website reference the textbook is basic television principle uh, by uh, bernard grob and television and video engineering by am dak this ends the session thank you